Well, it is uh, Sunday, November the 10th, uh, 2013, and I'm just starting up my uh, protest in front of the uh, Unitarian Church of Montreal. It's the day between um, the uh, 18th uh, anniversary of Reverend Ray Drennan uh, falsely and maliciously uh, labeling an interreligious event that I'd organized as a cult. Uh, intolerantly and abusively and quite ignorantly labeling a uh, religious uh, experience that I was trying to explain to him uh, in quite rational terms as uh, your psychotic experience and uh, angrily insisting that I seek uh, professional help and uh, in a more general sense he uh, dismissed uh, all of my theistic religious beliefs, most of which are very much in alignment with pretty well everyone else's theistic religious beliefs, i.e. most monotheists, Jews, Christians, Muslims, and so on, and a certain amount of overlap with uh, pagans as well. Um, you know, this was all silliness and fantasy, to use his uh, exact words. Um, so I'm protesting that intolerance and bigotry. And yes, oh, tomorrow, I forgot to mention, tomorrow is uh, November 11th, Remembrance Day, which is a day when uh, we commemorate the uh, soldiers that fought in uh, various uh, wars and died fighting those wars. And, you know, one of the things the uh, soldiers uh, ostensibly fight for are uh, democratic uh, rights and freedoms, which, of course, include... Uh, freedom of speech, um, which brings me to uh, my protest. Um, the uh, protest here that I have been uh, engaging in now for over 15 years is uh, one of the most peaceful public protests you're ever likely to see. Just one person with a picket sign in each hand and a few freestanding picket signs, uh, someone who isn't making a lot of noise, isn't shouting and yelling, isn't uh, using a megaphone, although I did invest in one at one point because uh, Unitarian Universalists were trying to get rid of my extra picket sign. So I said, well, if you don't want my extra picket signs, I guess I'll just have to use a megaphone to say the other things I want to say. Um, but the point being here is, is that uh, right now, or soon anyway, uh, Within a half hour or so, Reverend Diane Rollert is be going to be doing a sermon, no doubt about, you know, Remembrance Day and, and the uh, rights and freedoms that uh, Canadian and other soldiers uh, ostensibly fought for in World War I, World War II, and subsequent wars. Um, and yet this very same Unitarian Universalist minister has tried very hard to prevent me from exercising my uh, right to engage in peaceful public protest. In fact, uh, she, of all Unitarians, is actually the one who's been most successful in suppressing my protest because on the basis of uh, paranoid fantasies and or perjurious lies, one or the other, or possibly a combination of both, um, Reverend R Diane Rollett was actually successful in obtaining a one-year restraining order against me. Uh, she claimed to be very frightened of me. She rounded up a certain number of uh, congregants who made similar claims. And uh, she uh, told her sad story to one of the worst judges in Quebec court, specifically uh, Juge Roland Matt, who is known to make uh, decisions with little or no support for them, um, and who's also one of the more hard-nosed uh, judges in Quebec court. In fact, I could be mistaken, um, but I've been told she was actually demoted and uh, taken out of Quebec court as a result of her, uh, her uh, poor judgment, as we shall say. Um, so, so Reverend Diane Rollett was actually successful 
in suppressing my right to protest for one full year. And in fact, she was trying, as were the other Unitarians, to have it suppressed permanently. She and other Unitarian Universalists believed that if they were able to obtain this uh, one year restraining order against me, that it could be extended indefinitely. In other words, that I would not be able to return after one year and continue my protest, or if I did, that they would be able to uh, further suppress my protest with further complaints to the police. And they definitely did try to do that. Uh, in fact, a uh, Montreal police detective by the name of Scott Zara tried to intimidate me into uh, ending my protest. He said he would arrest me on criminal charges if I continued it. And uh, I had to uh, have a little chat with him at the uh, Quebec Police uh, Ethics Commission as a result of his uh, intimidation and harassment. And I uh, was successful in making the point that he had absolutely no grounds to threaten me with arrest when I uh, returned to the scene of the alleged crime, as it were. Um, so yes, uh, you know, this protest today has special significance because A, it's the day after the 18th anniversary of uh, Reverend Ray Drennan's uh, intolerant and abusive attack on me, and uh, the day before Remembrance Day, which uh, is a day where we commemorate all of the uh, soldiers who have died uh, fighting ostensibly for, uh, amongst other things, uh, the right to uh, freedom of speech and freedom of religion and so on. So on that note, I will uh, wrap up this monologue. Seems to be pretty quiet, not a whole lot of people uh, yet, um, although I'm a little bit late showing up. Um, I'm normally here uh, before 10 o'clock, um, sometimes as early as 9.30, but uh, today I was busy uh, on the internet before uh, coming here and uh, got off to a later start than usual. So it may be that a certain number of people have already uh, entered the church. Anyhow, we're going to uh, continue this little protest today, celebrating the uh, 18th uh, anniversary of uh, the event that uh, led to this protest beginning um, in uh, May of 1998 and which has yet to be resolved uh, thanks to Unitarian Universalist uh, institutional stonewalling and denial and legal bullying and so on. <clears throat> In fact, as far as Unitarian Universalist uh, legal bullying goes, uh, the Unitarian Universalist Association down in Boston had me served with a uh, arrogant and aggressive uh, cease and desist demand letter last June. That is June 2012. I'm not talking about June 2013. I'm talking June just over 17 months ago. Um, so I received an email from Steichman Elliott, uh, barristers and solicitors, a litigation lawyer, Maitre Marc Andre Coulomb, uh, which had a PDF file attached to it, which was a PDF file of the actual uh, paper document that I later uh, was very happy to go to the bailiff's office to pick up, um, which amongst other things accused me of the archaic crime of uh, blasphemous libel for allegedly making, and this is an exact quote from the letter, unfounded and vicious allegations to the effect that ministers of the association engage in such despicable crimes as pedophilia and rape. So essentially, on that basis, uh, the UUA, via Steichman Elliott Barristers and Solicitors, was accusing me of a crime that carries a two-year prison sentence, um, and which, by the way, has not been prosecuted since 1936, um, in an effort to uh, force me or intimidate me into taking down, to use their exact terms, uh, some blog posts I had put up uh, about uh, 
some Unitarian Universalists who had, in fact, been convicted of engaging in such despicable crimes as pedophilia and or rape. In fact, uh, one of the Unitarian Universalists, who I did, in fact, blog about, uh, and who was not, in fact, the Unitarian Universalist minister, by the way, uh, can be properly described as a pedophile rapist, and that's exactly how I described him, because his victims were preteen girls who were no older than 12 at the time that the rapes took place. And according to some estimates that were published in newspaper reports about this uh, pedophile rapist being convicted of the, the despicable crimes known as pedophilia and rape, um, the children might have been, and notice the plural there, um, the children might have been as young as six years old um, at the times of rape. Certainly, it seems that uh, uh, some of them were around nine, give or take a year, at the time that the rapes took place. And we're talking about uh, more than one kid. In fact, uh, the statute of limitations had run out on some of the previous rapes. Um, so he was actually, as I understand it, convicted of raping uh, two girls, one being a uh, female family member who looks to be a granddaughter according to the uh, age that the uh, young girl was when she was raped and according to the age he was when he raped her. Uh, he was in his mid-fifties uh, when he raped her and uh, the rape victim was, as I previously mentioned, somewhere between 9 and 12 years old when those rapes uh, took place. Uh, the other person, a young girl that he was convicted of raping was a uh, neighbor's daughter, who I believe came over for a sleepover. I don't think he went over to his neighbor's house and raped his neighbor's daughter, but uh, I believe that uh, the neighbor's daughter was raped when she came over for a sleepover at his house. Um, so, you know, where the uh, Unitarian Universalist Association uh, come up with the idea that I am uh, blaspheming against the Unitarian Universalist uh, Church for blogging about uh, some cases where uh, Unitarian Universalists did in fact engage in such despicable crimes as pedophilia and rape um, is beyond me. <clears throat> yes, I'm talking about how uh, I am being accused of the crime of blasphemous libel by the Unitarian Universalist Association for allegedly making unfounded and vicious allegations to the effect that ministers of the Unitarian Universalist Association engage in such despicable crimes as pedophilia and rape. They are accusing me of a crime that carries a two-year jail sentence in an effort to shut me up about the fact that a certain number of Unitarian Universalist ministers have in fact engaged in such despicable crimes as pedophilia and rape. That's your church, buddy, if you happen to be a member. <coughs> <coughs> So, I just uh, informed a member of the public uh, what I was uh, rambling on about. <clears throat> so, yes, people are showing up now. And uh, we shall. Uh, See how many uh, customers we get this morning in terms of uh, people who actually see my picket signs. Uh, but that uh, young fellow who I uh, spoke with uh, briefly um, does seem, uh, his face is familiar, I think I've seen him before, so he's one of the younger people attending the uh, Unitarian Church of Montreal. I don't know if he's an actual member. Oh, I forgot, today is... <laughs> Today is actually a day where I think after today's service, uh, they're actually having a uh, meeting for prospective members. I had totally forgotten about that. Uh, so it's quite possible that this young fellow is not yet a member of the Unitarian Church of Montreal, uh, but is considering 
becoming a church of the, uh, I mean, a member of the uh, Unitarian Church of Montreal. So uh, it'll be interesting to uh, see uh, what comes of that. Um, yes, I had, had forgotten about that. Um, in fact, last week uh, when I didn't protest, because I did actually have some other things to do, um, they had a longer meeting uh, regarding taking in new members, you know, with the new members. I think it was sort of an information type meeting uh, that went for a couple of hours. So, uh, we shall see. I had, I had forgotten about that. I, I think actually I will probably, since I'm late arriving, um, I think I will probably stick around and uh, continue my protest uh, after the service is over and as people are leaving um, and take a break in between. So, uh, I've been doing that relatively frequently in the last little while. Um, so, uh, you know, normally uh, I just uh, protest between, let's say, 9.30 and 11 o'clock, you know, give or take uh, 15 minutes or so. Um, I do on occasion uh, come back uh, after the service, but it's usually rare. So, anyway, at least uh, one member or perhaps prospective member of the Unitarian Church of Montreal is uh, now aware that the Unitarian Universalist Association is accusing me of the archaic crime of uh, blasphemous libel in an effort to uh, cover up and uh, hide online evidence uh, that a certain number of Unitarian Universalists, Unitarian Universalist clergy, specifically according to their um, legal letter, even though as I said the, the one Unitarian Universalist who I did in fact describe as a pedophile rapist because that's exactly